Do you know how to find section properties of steel elements? In this tutorial, I will teach you how to find these properties from section table. This is part two of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please press the link down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Steel sections, they are produced through hot roll process and through cold form sections and built up sections. Now, the normal sections that we see is a hot ro roll sections and hot rolling is a process and very thin sec sections like profile sheeting, they are produced through cold form process. And the grades that we normally use for uh, steel, S275 and S355 for these sections, the ones that you see over here. Now, what does it mean by 255? and 355. It means that yield FY for these members is 275 and FY for these members is 355. This is the stress means Newton per millimeter square. And the most common ones are these standard I beams that we use as beams. Sometimes we call them as UKBs. Wide flame sections, the ones that we say UKC or column sections. Most of the time for beams in, in the UK, we commonly use S275. In some cases, I mean, we use 355 as well. But for columns, certainly we need stronger columns. So we use S355. But recently we have this new development. British Steel, they have introduced this new steel grade S460M. They are producing the sections ranging from 203, 165, 40. So the sections are in UKBs and columns and they are producing these asymmetric beams as well. This means that their yield is going to be 460. This is very high strength steel but now we are getting into this high strength criteria. So let me move on to structural tubes. In tubes, we have different sections. In tubes, we have these two grades, S355 and S420. So it's not available in S275. We use standard steel sections. For finding out properties of these, we refer to section tables. The most important thing to note here is that some of you might be familiar with other design codes. In Euro codes, the major axis, which used to be XYY in other codes, it's YY. So YY is the major axis, ZZ is the minor axis. Again, these terms, C is equal to CF and C is equal to CW. We will use these terms in section classification. But for the time being, B is breadth of the section, H is the overall depth of the section, D is the depth of flat portion of web. This long portion is termed as web the horizontal portion this portion is termed as flange and tf is the thickness of flange tw is thickness of web now for a particular section where do we get this information from so we get this information from section table for using section table we have another online section table that i normally tend to use if i'm not in the exam situation just type in steel for life and then this interactive blue book will come up and then now you can have a look at properties of universal beams and then you can see all these properties over here in euro code we have yy as major axis and zz as minor axis the notation over here 1016305 for it 7 so the first dimension is always the overall depth of the section h and second dimension is the breadth of the section but the section itself is 1016305 and then its weight is mass is given as well the first dimension here is overall depth but this is slightly different from what you observe here and there is a reason for that which i'll come a little bit later breadth of the section is here as well and then you can see that we have thickness of web thickness of flange root radius and then d these factors we will use them when we classify the sections and second moment of area i this is quite important when we work out the sections and then you have radius of gyration now this is important as well for designing columns but all the information is available here so when you choose a section you will have to include this information designation this hot roll 1016305487 is for the section of overall depth 1016 the actual nominal is 1036 this is the the exact metric conversion of nominal imperial sizes here it's 40.4 inches because this has been converted from imperial sizes so that's why h and d is going to be slightly different not hugely different but slightly different and again the second column tells you the mass at one height and i already explained these things again you have radius of gyration the formula for radius of gyration is i over a under root we will use this radius of gyration when we will design columns we have this plastic section modular. The one I referred to when I was telling you ultimate limited state, 
is that moment capacity is equal to WPL times FY. The axial capacity tensile or compressive is equal to A times FY. But the moment capacity, I will have to multiply this plastic modulus. And that's where we will need that. And area of the section is given over here, which we will use to work out its axial capacity. When we will design unrestrained beams, then we will use these torsional values. But once you choose the section, you will need this information and you will have to familiarize yourself with this section table. One thing that the units are different here, it's centimeter square for area. So make sure that you have a consistent unit when you're using them in formula. There are two types of frames. One type of frame is braced or non-sway frame where joints are pinned, which means that they don't transfer any moment from the members to the columns. Others are moment frames. The example of simple frame is that we have a frame, the joints are pinned, moments are not transferred, and then we will have a cross bracing. Others are moment frames where joints are fixed. This is moment frame or sway frame. This is non-sway frame or pin frame. Bracing is needed to ensure that it does not go away. If we have pins over here, if we apply loading, bracing is not there. This is going to be unstable. All of, in fact, all of our design will, will be based on the fact that there are pins at the end, which is the sensible assumption for buildings. So in buildings, most of the time we will have uh, pinned ends and then we will have bracing. At we will be limited to braced or non-sway frames. We will not talk about the moment frames. Bracing transfers the lateral load uh, to the ground. Moment and forces are determined through first order elastic analysis. Second order effects are ignored. So what are second order effects? Second order, order effects are, are P delta effects. So if you have a long column, if you apply loading on that, it is going to deflect like this. And then due to this increased deflection, it will have this kind of eccentricity over here. Because of that, it will have kind of second order deflections. 